I've got a story of data loss and redemption for you today. Let me set the scene. You're brand new on the job. You're so new on the job, you haven't even got through the onboarding paperwork yet. When your boss comes to you and says, hey, we have these web servers and we need to get their logs into the ClickHouse database. Could you handle that for me? Now, in your previous job, you use Decodable. So you know how easy it is to build something like that. So you say, sure, I'll do that. And the boss goes and leaves you. Now, the boss seems like a nice enough guy, but he's one of those folks who thinks he really understands data. Maybe that's because he took a single class in SQL when he was in his MBA program. He also demands that he has admin rights to everything. But, you know, you get what you get. So you go ahead and you get to work on this. And in just a few minutes, you've got it connected up to those web servers and you're bringing in the data through a connection right into Decodable. You're going from there through a stream and then to a pipeline. And it's up and running. You're ingesting the data and it's running great. So um, you, you do need to do a little bit more work because the data needs to be parsed out. So you write up a quick SQL statement to break out the columns that you're interested in. Then you go ahead and you say, hey, I'll run a preview. Let's make sure that the data is in the format I'm looking for. And sure enough, those are the two columns that I want to ingest into ClickHouse. So everything seems to be running good. So it's time to go ahead and get it connected up to ClickHouse. So we go to um, the next stream, but from there we see we have data, but we don't have an output. So that's the next thing we need to do. So we'll click here, say create a sync. We'll pick click house as our sync. And then you go ahead and you fill out um, the um, you go ahead and you fill out the configuration that you need. Simple things um, like a host name. Got to have a host name. And then you're going to need a port. So you put in the port. Then you're going to put in the cluster name. And you need to put in the database name. And finally, the table you want to write those records into. And username and password, which it's saved. All right, so you go ahead at this point and you say next. You see that you're connected up to the correct stream, so that's good. You can go ahead and you say next. Then it pops up with the schema, and that also looks correct. So you say next. Now you need to give this a name. Um, a reasonable name in this case would be to name this connection based on the table that you're going to be flowing it into. So you give it a name like that. And a description. And say create connection. You need to go ahead and start it. You see that it's running. So the next thing you do is you say, 
let's go see if we're getting data into ClickHouse. Run a quick little count, and boom, you are flowing records into ClickHouse. Fantastic. Well, you know, you'll want to go ahead and double check that it's working the way that you think it is. So you go ahead and keep hitting it a couple of times just to make sure the count's going up. And then why not take a quick look at the data itself to make sure that everything is good. You run it and you've got data. Fantastic. So here you are, first day on the job, and you've already solved a problem for your company. And that's great. But you've got that onboarding paperwork. You got to get back to that. So this goes on great for a couple of days and everybody is happy. Um, people are using this data and your bosses um, had wanted this personally because he was going to use it in a presentation and boom, it's great. But then he comes back to your desk and what does he say? Somebody dropped the table. Now you may have your own suspicions about who that somebody was, but there's no time for that. It's time for you to leap into action and see if you can correct this problem. So the first thing you need to do is verify that you do have a problem. So you go ahead and you run your query again and poop, it's gone. <laughs> you don't have it anymore. All right, we don't freak out. I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna fix this. So the first thing you do is stop your connection Now, you remember from before that there's an ability with Decodable because it holds on to data up to seven days. And that's what you're going to use to fix this. But before we do that, um, we need to fix um, ourselves over on the ClickHouse side because we don't have a table to go into anymore. So let's do that. Now you're clever, so you keep a text file, which has got all your table create statements in it, so that you can just quickly put that back in. And you run it. Okay, step one, you've got a table. So you're, you're certain you already know the answer to this, but it's not a bad idea to go ahead and verify that it's empty like you know it is. Yeah, no records. So we need to go fix that. Well, like I mentioned before, in Decodable, both with pipelines and with connections, you have the ability to access up to seven days of previous data. So you hover over Start and if you go down here to force, it says that the default behavior is to just basically pick up where it's left off. But if we say force, we get two more options. We can start with the latest data or the earliest data. So we go ahead, you hit start. You see that it's running. So you excitedly go back out to ClickHouse. Do I have data? You run your query again and boom, look at all those records. So it has gone ahead and it has brought in the historical data and it has repropagated the table. Now, always a good idea to go ahead and make sure and it looks great. So this is taking you all of a couple of minutes and you go back to your boss and say, you're good to go. Your presentation should be fine. You've got your data back. Now, and you're the hero. So I hope you've enjoyed um, this little presentation 
and my storytelling on how you can recover from a fairly disastrous situation quite easily. And I hope that you find it useful.